Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I have two brand new Samsung Galaxy S20s here. The only difference, well, aside from the color, is one uses a Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 and the other Samsung's own Exynos 990 chip. Blue for Snapdragon and pink for Exynos. So once and for all, I want to find out if there's a real difference in terms of performance, battery life, and also the cameras. So let's get into it. And if you do enjoy the video, guys, it'd be amazing if you could give me a little thumbs up below. First of all, let's compare performance, starting with a couple of benchmarks. And in Geekbench 5, while single core results were pretty neck and neck actually, the Snapdragon was 18% faster in multi-core. But what about graphics? Well, jumping over to 3 Mark and running the Slingshot Extreme benchmark, actually, before we even get to the results, you can see a real difference in frame rate. So after the first test, the Snapdragon was 8% faster. I then ran it a second and a third time straight afterwards, and in both cases, the Snapdragon was 25% faster. Now after these benchmarks, jumping over to Antutu to look at the temperatures, and the Exynos is around 15 degrees hotter than the Snapdragon. Everyone stay frosty. Time to stretch our muscles. So this is Shadowgun Wargames, and if I use the Game Bench app to measure the performance of the phone in real time, you can see with the Exynos at the top right I'm getting 52 FPS as the median average. But then if I bring in the Snapdragon version, you can see it's locked to 60. That's at least a 20% gain over the Exynos. And even with the higher FPS, we can also see uh, the average CPU load is low on the Snapdragon. Uh, we can't compare GPU load because the Exynos doesn't support it within the game bench, but the amount of memory used is pretty similar. But what does all that mean in the real world? Well, firstly, with the Snapdragon, you'll get slightly higher frame rates in games, particularly more demanding ones. And with the latest flagship phones offering 90, 120, even 144 hertz screens, to take full advantage of that, you'll need to get 90, 120, or 144 FPS in games, something the Snapdragon will more easily achieve. And just as importantly, over longer play sessions, the Exynos will throttle more quickly. So when it comes to gaming, it's pretty clear cut. The Snapdragon is the better chip, but what about sort of just general real world use? Well, I set the phones up for a little speed test. Fresh restart, all the apps have been closed, same settings. So let's see which one comes first in this little app launching challenge. All right, so one minute 26 for the Snapdragon S20. And then finally, one minute 45 for the Exynos. So altogether, the Snapdragon was 22% faster. So we've established the Snapdragon is faster and also it stays cooler throughout. Now, before we test the battery and camera, a big thank you to Surfshark VPN who are kindly sponsoring this video. Now, obviously I'm not doing any traveling at the moment where I would usually use Surfshark on my phone or laptop to browse the web safely, say for internet banking or if I'm logging into a website. But even at home here in the UK, while it's handy for watching, you know, American Netflix and Hulu, it still keeps my browsing safe and prevents ads, trackers, malware, and even phishing attempts. And the best bit is if you click the link in the description below or use the code TechChap on the website, you'll get 83% off and one month extra free. I use it, I recommend it, give it a try. Next up, battery life. Which one lasts longer? Well, with both phones identically set up, let's do an intensive real-world battery test of gaming, watching videos, checking socials, shooting some 4K video, using Google Maps with data, the usual stuff that you and I might do, but non-stop until one of them dies. At 9.45 a.m., both phones were fully charged and ready to go, and after the first hour of YouTube, there wasn't much in it. Then, following an hour of gaming, we do start to see the Exynos fall behind a little bit, but not by much. Two hours later, the Snapdragon is definitely in the lead with 6% more battery. And by the end, six hours and 10 minutes after we started, the Exynos version finally gives up, leaving the Snapdragon as the winner with 13% still remaining, which depending on your usage could be good for another hour. So two wins for the Snapdragon so far, but for the third and final test, I wanna compare the cameras, see if there's any real difference in photo quality. So using my once a day lockdown exercise walk, I took a bunch of pictures side by side, but I want you to get involved with this one. So we've got camera A and camera B, and I'll reveal which is which at the end, but before that, I want you to look closely, see which one you think takes better photos, and then vote in the poll. All right guys, so what do you think? Vote in the poll at the top right and choose A or B. All done? Okay, well, I can reveal A is the Exynos and B is the Snapdragon. Let me know in the comments if you guessed which was which, but to be clear, none of these photos have been edited or changed in any way. They're all fresh out of the phones. 
But why is it different? I mean, they have the same sensors, lenses, megapixels, and all that stuff. Well, it all comes down to the ISP, or the Image Signal Processor, which are built into the chips, whether it's the Snapdragon or the Exynos. The ISP, as it kind of says on the tin, does all the processing. So exposure, colors, noise, AI tweaks. It's the brains of the camera. And it seems the Snapdragon's camera brain is just smarter. Okay, so we've established the Snapdragon version is on average 22% faster than the Exynos. In my intensive real-world battery test, this still had 13% of its battery left. And in the camera department, there was a noticeable difference in terms of quality when it came to uh, exposure and noise, particularly in low light shots and when using night mode. So across the board, the Snapdragon is clearly the better chip. And I have to say, it's actually kind of frustrating that, you know, here in the UK, in Europe, and in other regions, we are essentially getting an inferior product. Uh, even though we're paying you know, relatively the same amount of money. Unfortunately, we don't really have much choice aside from maybe importing one from North America, South America, or Japan where uh, you get the Qualcomm models. Although amazingly, there is actually a petition that's been set up asking Samsung to use the Snapdragon chips globally. So why don't they? Well, I think the simple answer is because Samsung make the Exynos chips, that is obviously cheaper for them than buying Qualcomm's products. Plus they can sell a cheaper version without 5G in some markets. But whatever the reason, it is kind of disappointing. And I really do hope that Samsung maybe invests a little bit more in the quality of the Exynos chips so they are more comparable with the Snapdragon. If you're gonna call both of these, the Galaxy S20, and as I say, charge the same kind of money relative to you know the local currency, they should be the same product, but they're clearly not battery life, performance, camera quality, across the board, while it's not always a night and day difference, the Exynos version simply isn't as good. And this has been going on for years with Samsung phones. For my American friends who are lucky enough to get these Samsung phones with the uh, Qualcomm chip, all I can say is, damn you, I'm jealous. Although in the great scheme of, you know, first world problems, I think this does rank fairly highly. To be fair, these are still both great phones. But what do you reckon? Is this a big deal? Am I just complaining about nothing or are we being shortchanged? Let me know what you think of the Qualcomm versus Exynos debate in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And if you do want to see more from me, make sure you hit that little subscribe button below. And once again, a big thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Check out the link in the description below or use the code TECHCHAP to get 83% off and one month extra free. So why not give it a try?